we look at this report, there was heavyweights like AWS and Microsoft. How does this report, how does Gartner look at gravity as compared to these heavyweights? Hi, this is Yoho Sapna Bhartia and welcome to TFLS Talk. Today we have with us Linus Hawkinson, field CTO at Gravity. Linus, it's great to have you on the show. Very good. Nice to meet you all. It's my pleasure to host you here today. And this is the first time I'm talking to someone from Gravity. So I would love to know a bit about the company. Talk about, you know, what are you focused on? What problem are you trying to solve in this modern world? Yeah, of course. So I'm sure a lot of listeners and viewers have heard about APIs before. It's kind of the connectivity glue between any service. So whenever you interact with a website, you use your favorite AI tool, a mobile application, rest assured you're using APIs. Uh, so every organization in the world somehow uses APIs. Most of them create services that are exposing APIs to their partner, customers, public users, internal applications, and so forth. So APIs um, need very good security. They need very good discoverability and documentation for people to be able to know what the APIs exist, how to work with them, and providers of APIs need to be comfortable that they are secured, that they know who is consuming them, uh, understanding if there's any issues or challenges um, with those APIs. And that's where API management comes in to address needs that enterprises have to manage those APIs, how to make a developer portal for people to discover and subscribe to APIs, uh, bringing tooling like securing APIs with different security mechanisms and so forth. Now at Gravity, we're in this API management space and we tackle this from a quite unique position. We believe that REST and SOAP and other traditional APIs, there's a good kind of documentation and standardization and tooling available since a couple of years back. But with the explosion of event-driven architectures, real-time applications, real-time decision-making, organizations have adopted new types of APIs, event-driven APIs, whether it's Kafka or Webhook or WebSocket and other types of real-time uh, API services. They also need to be protected. They also need to be documented. Uh, discover, uh, discoverable and you need to maybe rate limit them or other security controls on top of them. And that sort of tooling in the market for those sort of new event-driven APIs haven't really been there. So at Gravity, we are treating those APIs as first-class citizens, delivering tooling that helps organizations manage all types of APIs effectively. So that's what we do. Um, we founded 2016. The growth really kicked off in 2019. And at the moment, we're north of 100 people in the organization with around 170 customers. I just want to look at API management space, how companies are doing it, what kind of unique challenges this vendor sprawl, services sprawl, how it poses for them. And after that, then we will talk about a bit deeper into how gravity is approaching. You you touch the surface, you scratch the surface, we'll go a bit deeper. But let's start with this point is that, you know, the state of API management. Maybe life was a bit easier maybe 10 years ago when you went with an IBM or an SAP or an Oracle, and that was kind of it. And uh, someone might employ people to walk around and make sure that no developers were using tooling outside of a of a commercial stack. But I think with, with open source and with cloud vendors and with the, the adoption of, of a you know, much easier solution for, for developers to get hands on, Organizations, I think, have faced um, a situation now where they might have a central platform team that might have standardized on a particular solution, might be in Gravity or something else for API management, but they don't want to necessarily hamper other teams to get quickly started and, and be productive. So you might have some teams that work in an Amazon solution. Some might be working in an Azure solution. Some might be developing something homegrown in their team. And that brings a couple of challenges to the modern enterprise. I think one is that central platform team that might be responsible for the overall governance, overall uh, kind of enablement for the individual teams might struggle to gather everything under a centralized platform because the nature of modern development teams is very much decentralized in the way that people can kind of go and start your Amazon account and do whatever service you want and no one might nece not necessarily block you. And the platform team doesn't want to stop you in all, in all situations, but they want to have some type of, of governance. They want to see and understand what APIs the different teams might be creating, even though it's not managed by the central solution potentially. And from a consumer perspective, it brings a challenge in terms of where do I find 
and discover my services and APIs. They are going to Amazon, they're going to Google, Oracle, MuleSoft, you know, whatever it might be. And that's a big challenge as organizations are, especially large organizations that have might acquired companies that have different business units being responsible for different um, product um, um, acquisitions potentially. And that's, I think, where, where some vendors now in the API management space is trying to solve this problem. Not only unifying API discoverability and API management for different type of velocities, like we mentioned REST and synchronous and asynchronous, but also across multiple runtimes, your cloud hyperscaler API gateway solutions, and maybe your, your legacy systems and, and, and other systems as well. I think that's where a lot of vendors in the space is, is, is kind of looking to help organizations in this moment in time. Now, I also want to talk about uh, something exciting, which is, you know, in Gartner's, you know, Magic Quadrant for API management. You, they kind of named you as a visionary in this space. Uh, so, of course, uh, we cannot talk from Gartner's perspective, but I want to hear from you. What do you think makes you folks unique and um, which will also relate to, you know, as we are talking about the whole state of API, you know, management and what value you bring to the table. So let's just look at, you know, what made Carter look at you folks as visionaries. So, so look at it from your perspective. What, what the API management um, ecosystem and the market has been around for, for a long time, right? So there's, there's vendors there that has been there for 15, 20 years. And basically every hyperscaler like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Oracle, SAP, IBM, you name them, also have a competitive solution in this space, right? So it is a crowded market and it's been around for a while. I think one of the things that Gartner really recognizes with Gravity is this ability for us to, to treat different APIs uh, with the same sort of tooling. So they call out the fact, for example, that we're focusing also on event-driven APIs, that we are you know, working with AI technologies. They look a lot of innovation and and how good you are at articulating new challenges that enterprises are facing with your uh, platform. And I think that's definitely something that contributes to our very strong position. Now, when Gartner creates a magic quadrant, they typically also have what they call a critical capabilities addendum to that, that helps give the score of the product offering in, the, in their magic quadrant position. Um, so in the critical capabilities, you know, Gartner doesn't necessarily care about how much salespeople you have or how big your marketing department is and other things that play a part in a magic quadrant position. They just purely look at the capabilities and features that your platform offers to customers effectively. And I think, uh, so I think Gravity and two other vendors of those 18 in a magic quadrant scores in the top five for all of the use cases that Gartner looks at for those critical capabilities. And I think for us, that's, that's a very unique combination to be seen as a visionary, as that next generation vendor. But if you look at an apple to apple comparison from a feature perspective, you know, we stack up there with the top three vendors um, in, in the market. So that's a very, very unique position for any vendor in that magic quadrant and something that is, is very, it's a very good foundation to stand on when you innovate, that you, you have that strong, strong foundation um, in terms of meeting the needs of today that Gartner recognizes with their customers. If you look at this report, there was heavyweights like AWS and Microsoft. How does this report, how does Gartner look at gravity as compared to these heavyweights? So I think with uh, someone like Microsoft and Amazon, they will obviously always have a big advantage and probably should have a big advantage given the fact that they are backed by massive organizations, right? So those companies are not gonna go away. They're very feasible, they're very sustainable. Uh, and that helps them a lot with their uh, kind of foundation position in something like a Gartner Magic Quadrant, of course. Now, um, Microsoft and Amazon both have invested in API solutions. Amazon, very focused on their own ecosystem. So they only provide a gateway. They don't necessarily have a developer portal. Neither would they probably open up to integrate with third-party API providers to centralize the API governance. They're very focused on the, on the Amazon ecosystem. Um, you find a similar situation with Microsoft. It's, it's quite tailored around the, the wider uh, Azure ecosystem, uh, their API management solution. So typically what we see um, with those solutions is that customers quite often get started with those. I think they are definitely the most adopted gateways in terms of a number of, of customers using them because they're so easy to use there if you're already an Amazon or Microsoft customer. Um, but then you sometimes grow out of those because Amazon and Microsoft are not in business for being a 
an API management vendor. That's not there where they're going to get all of the most revenue in, right? And that's not where they specialize. So obviously vendors like ourselves uh, have maybe a more of an opinionated idea of where the market is going and have maybe the ability to very, move very quickly to go uh, to where the market is going in, into a few years and not have to worry so much about the wider ecosystem of, of us as a cloud provider. So um, hopefully that, that gives an idea of, of, of how it's a bit different uh, when you compare a hyperscaler platform versus a specialized vendor like Gravity is offering. Uh, it's typically very much more innovative and it has a stronger opinion on where the API market is going. We were at KubeCon earlier, uh, you know, last month and uh, day one was all about Gen AI. When it comes to API management, what role do you see of Gen AI? How is Gravity or where you are in it comes of embrace or you feel it's too early? So I think API management needs to look at Gen AI from three different perspectives. So one is the consumer's perspective. So at Gravity, we believe that AI and generative AI will help consumers better to self-serve and maybe even create APIs for them. So let me give you an example. So for modern organizations today, if I'm an organization that needs to provide a service to my partner, my customer, I need to create an API. I need to define what that API should include, what properties, what fields, how to interact with, all these capabilities I have to fig figure out and then implement and then give out to my consumer so they can go and discover it. What we think is that AI might switch that so that a consumer might go in and say, this is what I need. I'm going to use natural language. I'm going to tell you what I need. And then the API platform automatically generates that based on pre-approved packages and APIs that the API provider might have already put together there effectively. So it automatically gives you that already to accelerate the time to market and potentially remove the need of custom work by the provider. So that's one very interesting angle. It's gonna probably take a while to get the market ready for that as you know, you put basically putting the powers into the consumers in terms of exactly what services they want effectively. I think the other one, which is maybe a little bit more short term is how generative AI and AI in general can help the API provider to accelerate getting the APIs to market that the, the, the consumer wants. So here we talk about, for example, uh, prompts and natural language to create an API from a provider perspective, maybe uh, writing something like create me an API that protects my backend service over here. It should have rate limiting, it should have OAuth security, and it should transform the data from XML to JSON. And just with that text, you will be able to have that API created by the API platform immediately, for example. So that's one one other angle that, that we're looking at it from. And then the third one is, with the explosion of open AI and, and gen AI in general and all these different LLMs out there, API management might provide a, a unique angle on how to protect and govern those models to maybe abstract them from the consumer potentially. And things like rate limiting and transformations and routing might become very important from a AI and LLM perspective and API gateways and API management platforms, I think have a good foundation to help address that. So that's a, three different angles, if you will, that we're all uh, observing here at Gravity and, and we're innovating in that kind of direction as well. This is like not the mid of the year, but it's uh, April 2nd, not April 1st. So I, I could have asked more funny questions. Uh, if you look at Gravity, of course, there may be a lot of things in your pipeline you cannot share. We will talk about them when they're ready, but just give us a glimpse what kind of things we should expect from Gravity this year. So this year we're going very hard on what we call federation. So federation is the concept of Gravity and an API platform allowing APIs that runs on other gateways, might be Amazon, might be Microsoft, and other event brokers, might be Confluent, Kafka, and Solace and other event brokers, allowing them to have a place in the Gravity API platform, to have a unified developer portal where discoverability is possible not only for Gravity APIs, but also Amazon APIs, Microsoft APIs, IBM APIs, Apogee APIs, other type of platforms. Um, coming to my earlier point, this is where we see a big issue in organizations today where they might have different solutions, maybe because of acquisitions, because of legacy, migration takes time, multi-cloud strategies, and that's something that we're physically addressing with, with Gravity this year. So we're looking to add already in June, a few of those solutions into our platform. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Monetization is another big thing that um, customers are using Gravity for, but we want to make that much easier. So we're revamping how our developer portal works 
um, and how people can gain um, immediate monetary uh, revenue basically by exposing APIs in a very pack packageable and discoverable and uh, a way that integrates well with billing systems, for example, for that kind of monetization. Uh, and then indeed, um, and we do, we have an entire team just focused on AI and generative AI and, and how we can augment the platform as well as providing new use cases for our customers with AI. So those are, I, I would say, the three highlight areas that, that we're bringing for, for this year. Let us thank you so much for taking time out today. Of course, uh, talk about the company, talk about Gantos Magic Quadrant, establishing you folks as a visionary company. Thanks for all those great insights and I would love to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me.